Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Mike. It's Dan. Welcome to Beyond Science 2 and we are talking about food today because right. we eat every day. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. otherwise we're dead. We right. eat. But there are some foods that we might be eating the wrong way. Exactly. And you've been eating these foods all your lives. All right? Or you've been doing something the way you cut it or the way yeah. you prepare it. And then all of a sudden you find out that it's not like that. And yeah. there's a better way to do it. Yep. And then you're mind blown. Exactly. Exactly. So we're going to go over some ways to maybe eat your food better. Yeah. Let's start off with tacos. Okay. This is really interesting. All right. Because typically when you think of tacos, you put the veggies on the inside. Right. right? You have some beef, you have some cheese, and then you have some lettuce, right. tomatoes, whatever. But what if mm -hmm. you put the lettuce on the outside? Well, that's pretty smart. Yeah. Because what's the one problem that tacos have? Everything falls out, especially yep. crunchy tacos. Yes. Well, even the soft tacos, right? Yeah. Well, Everything... especially the crunch tacos. You're right. Yeah. And it cracks. It's like, a, it's like a glacier. Yeah. It's like a layer of ice. Crumple a little bit of it, the rest kind of crackles and falls apart. I'll tell you, one of my most, like, pet peeves was when I used to eat Taco Bell. Yeah. I haven't done it in a long time, but I used to love the crunchy tacos. Yep. And every time, like you have to save the wrapper. Yeah. Because all the good stuff falls onto it's your wrapper. It's gonna fall out, yeah. And then do you know what I have to do? What? Lick the wrapper. Well, yeah, but I don't want I don't want it because there's people around. So I have to like- I've never stopped me. Yeah, well, you don't lick it. You, you put it up to your yeah. face and you you're like- <laughs> Yeah, you eat it like a- But then you're like all messy like and stuff. Hog. But if you had a piece of lettuce, it would fall into the lettuce. It's almost like two for one deal, right? Because you get, because you have had lettuce wraps. Yes. So first you got the crunchy wrap, then whatever falls well, in you the lettuce wrap. Well, you also need lettuce in your taco anyway. You also need lettuce so in your taco. So that's the better way to just consume your lettuce. Exactly. So there you go. Exactly. This next one is pretty interesting too. Mm -hmm. I, I really like this. I, I'm, I'm going to try this. I've been meaning to try yeah. this, okay? Here's what the trick. You use, ment you use dental floss. Make sure it's unscented or else everything's going to taste like yeah. mint. You can actually cut perfect lines in the cake or roll or even cheese and cheese I know works because a lot of times there's a, that, so there's a string. It's a string. Yeah. yeah, it's a really taut string. Yeah. So if you make the dental floss really taut, you can do that as well. And one of the biggest like annoyances because when, when I cut cake or when I cut cheese is the, the knife doesn't glide. Right. And then and you get all this like sticky stuff. And then the next piece you cut, it's I like a neat looking cake. And, okay? and then you got and then you got stuff on the on the on the knife. Then you got to lick the knife. But then you, you can't let that go to waste. Cut your tongue. Don't lick knives, guys. Okay. I need to try this next time. And here's the thing about hacks. They blow your mind. But for some reason, you never. Tr I never think to try these. You know how many right. times I've seen the cake one, and I just I still haven't tried. Well, how often do you eat cake? Well, few times a year. Well, I mean, that. let me ask you this thing. Yeah. Of the few times a year that you eat cake, right. how often do you have dental floss? Well, you always have dental floss in your house, right? No, no, no. How often do you eat cake in your house? I don't know. Like I mean, twice I mean, a I'm year? I'm thinking most of the time you're eating cake, you're at a restaurant. Yeah. Because you bring someone a cake to their birthday party, which is usually not at your house. Right. So you usually don't have the two necessary right. ingredients to make this happen. All right, but I'm making a note in my brain right now. The next you're gonna time- You're going to forget it. I'm making. I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down because this looks awesome. I bet you'll never do this in your life. If you guys have done this, let us know if it actually works. Well, this one I really like. Okay, okay. I love eating mangoes. Okay, right? but here's how do you usually peel mangoes? <sighs> well, I'll tell you how I do it. Yeah, and it's the hard way. Is I you just take a paring knife and you sh you pe you pare the mango, which takes about. For me, I'm really good at it, but it still takes me like two. Okay, three I don't minutes. even do that. You know what I do? What do you I do? I cut it in half. Okay. So I cut it to the pit. I turn yeah. it over. I cut it again. So you got two halves. And then I literally peel one half yeah. off, yeah, and you, I just like start you munching. Scalp it. it. Yeah, I scalp <laughs> it, and it leaks everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Because I'm trying to bite it, and it leaks everywhere. Right. I, I didn't think you could do this. So here, what you can do, is cut a mango in half, mm -hmm. uh, de-pit it, yeah. and then just slide it into a glass. Yeah. And the juice and everything is already there. That's what I like about That's this. Amazing. You gotta make sure that it's a semi-ripe mango or yeah. else or else if you push too hard, you might if you have a thin glass, you might break it. So just make sure you have a decent glass yeah. and then your mango's ripe. Yeah. But That's amazing. I, I, I like we'll that. Try next time. Yeah. yeah. Alright, I, I got one. Again, I've always seen this done on the internet and I love cupcakes yeah. and I still haven't done it yet. Look at this cupcake hack. How how much sense does this make? It right? makes a lot of sense. Yet, you know me, I have cut clicks quite often. I, I do, yeah. right? And every time I just take it and then I try to open my mouth. And frosting gets everywhere. It gets on my nose. Yep. And it, it's just, and also I don't like it when there's just like a bunch of frosting on top and yeah. at the bottom there's just cake. But I'll tell you this, I, I cannot do this hack with the cupcake I like. 
So I, I like, do you like? I, okay, I don't eat cupcakes that often because right. I feel like the cupcake dough is, is too dry. Yeah, but that's why you have the icing. No, the icing only does so much. Yeah, it helps. It a is a little bit. too sweet. It so is. So the, the typical cup, cupcakes I like mm -hmm. are are they douse the dough part of the cupcake with like with like, like a syrup, a, syrup like or something. Syrup, yeah. like some kind of some, it's moist liquid. It's, it's moist. moist. Or maybe so milk. I can't really do this yeah. hack because it'll just crumple. Yeah, or like get all over your yeah. hands. Yeah. Again, I'm gonna try this. I still haven't tried it but yet. But for most cupcakes, that will work. That would work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do like this next one. Okay. So I all, I love pizza, right? I love pizza. How do you, how do I cook leftover pizza? I put it in the oven. Yeah. Or a little bit. Yeah, that's, well, that's nasty. Because then, then, the, then the crust turns all mm -hmm. tough and you can't really so eat it. So gross. So I never thought about this. If okay. you had a waffle iron, right? You waffle iron the pizza. Right. That's amazing. It, okay, that's really cool. But wouldn't the cheese? No. Nope. No. Nope. what you do. Why is that? Okay. Pizza sandwich. Two slices oh! right there. Oh my gosh. Yo, you just blew my mind. You just blew my mind. We need to do that. How often do we to, have leftover pizza? Well, now I'm gonna make sure I'm, I'm gonna- Wait, no, 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 no. We don't have a waffle iron. Yeah, not, not a lot of people have a, and, and, you, and it's not even like, okay, but we all have George Foreman girls, or we used to we used have to. George my, Foreman girls. My dad girl. threw mine out. But anyways, George Foreman girls, waffle iron, you can do that. That's pretty cool. So the next one, you guys might know, but I love this one because for all my life, I've been doing this wrong, mm -hmm. okay? If you have Chinese takeout and you know the box it comes in, mm -hmm. like the origami looking white box, yeah. don't throw the box away. Open the box and that's your plate. And it's perfect because usually what do you do with that box? You put it in the microwave. Yeah. And I love it even more now because before you, I had to like take out the metal thing. You have to take out the metal thing. They, they make it without the metal thing now. Really? Yeah, you didn't know that? I did not know that. You how do you how do you hold it then? They, it's it's you it's just hold it by the box. It's glued. No, no, no. no. How do you oh, hold the oh, little thing? No, you just put it, you go. Oh wow. Yeah. But because before if you'll burn down your house, yeah. right? So now you stick it in the microwave. When it comes out, use gloves. Open it and it's your plate. And I've been doing this ever since. Ever whoa, since. Wait, wait. I've used it as a plate though, ever since I was little. But how did you know that? Well, it's obvious. No, I tell you right now, me and because my friends. I took apart the metal thing and I separated it and that was a plate. Whoa. I knew that since well, that you was were, a kid. Okay, you're a genius then. Thank you. I will tell you right now. Somebody the recognizes. Moment, the moment I saw this, I was already in college and me and all my friends, we would order Chinese food every yeah. night, right? And we would never do this until somebody showed us this later on and we're like, how are we not doing that? All the time. You right. know what else I did? I took the rice one, I separated it. Then okay. I then I took the veggies one. I didn't need to separate right. that. So I took the veggie one, scooped right. to put it on the rice one. That's how I had dinner. Oh man. But anyways, that one blew my mind. Well, the next one I really love. This is this is this is pretty awesome. So Scooping frozen ice cream is tough. Like, that's the that's, worst. That's like one of the worst things you can yeah, do. It's the worst. So the, what they, what, they, what you can do here is mm -hmm. you can cut your basically just. I mean, you have to do this if you're willing to eat the whole container of ice cream. True, but now they're smaller. Even like, look, even if I'm eating a pint now, yeah. usually I could eat the whole pint if I wanted to, yeah. but I'm not gonna. But like, let's say we shared a pint. Why not do it like this? Yeah. So Why, you cut you know, it in half. This is perfect. You split it in half, and then perfect. you slice the ice cream into. Edible pieces, and then you, yeah, just put in your plate, whatever. Yeah. That's perfect. You can because, eat that like with a fork. I yeah, because think about how many times, like, you know why I eat from the pint directly? Because mm. it's just too hard. Think about this. By the time you scoop all the ice cream into a bowl, it's already yeah. melted. So yeah, um, yeah. Okay, I, I really like this because I like the combo of sweet and savory, mm -hmm. and I like bacon with a lot of stuff. So you could actually take a. <laughs> Pillsbury Cinnabon, and I love Cinnabons. I don't eat them that much anymore. Lay a piece of bacon in the bun and then cook it, voila, That's voila. Good. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Well, this one, I, I, I can't believe I've never thought of okay. because it is a problem. Okay. So when you eat cold cuts, right? Right. So I remember, like usually, this is mainly back in the day where mm -hmm. cold cuts is mainly just round. Nowadays it's more like- All kinds all of shapes, of shapes yeah. whatever. But yeah, people like, round cold cuts back in the day mm -hmm. and so what you can do well the problem is the edges of the bread are never uh filled with cold cuts because the cold right. cuts are round and you've right. got a square bread so what you do is cut them in half and you shape them you, you place them out uh, the, with a straight edge out right then you basically make a perfect square yo yo that's too much work for you man no you don't think so no because i want every one of my bites to contain meat. Okay. This is this next one. It's it's not. It's it's a really cool thing to do with food. It's kind of like a hack, but I never thought of this, and it makes total sense, right? You know, like when you when you make like fried egg or whatever, it, you know, it, it kind of has this big shape or yeah. whatever. It's not perfect. 
And I always like vegetables with my egg anyways, right? So now you can actually just cut, I always put peppers in my omelets anyway, so just cut a ring of pepper and use that as your egg holder, like in McDonald's, mm. they have those special egg McMuffin round holders mm. and they just crack the egg in there. But this is your basically your home homemade. This is like ingenious. Yeah, that's pretty good. Ingenious. I, I love potatoes. Okay. I love potatoes, I love baked potatoes, but I, I do see an issue, right? You bake a potato, you slice it in half, right? right? Then you put toppings on it. But the only way to really get the toppings in there is basically destroy the entire potato with the toppings on top, right? You that's kind right. of mash it together. So then it becomes a mashed potato. Right. But what if you slice your baked potato? So slice your potatoes before you bake it, so it becomes all like like sliced up. Ingenious. And then you put the the, the toppings on top oh. of that. Now every bite yeah. you have, yeah. this can be a nicely cut up potato right. with toppings. Yeah, and this is something like again, you you just never think to do this because you've accepted the way that potatoes yeah. are. Even even when you go to like what TGI Fridays and they have that potato app. I love that potato app, but it's just half a potato. Yeah bacon, cheese, sour cream, and then same thing happens. Either the cheese falls off, yeah. or like it's not cooked in, but this is perfect. Yeah, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. This one is really cool, because I used to eat a lot of Frito-Lays, right? And they're really salty. So, and I'm thinking to myself, yo, this is kind of just like nachos. So what if you took the bag, right? You open it up and you put all the nacho fillings inside. My friend, Yeah, that's a Frito pie, and we've been doing it in the Midwest for the last decade. Get out of here. Half, two yeah, decades, out of three here. decades. To make a Frito pie, okay. what's a Frito pie? You you take the Frito, open it up, right. dump 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 yeah, a bunch dump of stuff out. in there. Okay, but I guess you guys, but you guys didn't eat it right out of the bag. You don't eat it right out of the bag. The potato chip bag. Yeah, you okay. dump it in the bag. Right, and then you eat it. Are you kidding? Doing it for decades. Okay, because. I, all right, obviously I didn't, I didn't grow up in the Midwest. Uh, Midwest. Yeah. I grew up in the East Coast and yeah. some of the West Coast and no one ever has told me that. And that's, that's a secret redneck recipe. That's insane. I, I, I learned it in Missouri. Yeah. And we eat it in college. I'm doing this. Cause you know, like in recess, like I always had, you know, like when you're a kid and your yeah. mom buys you that box of small potato chips, there's like nine different kinds. And we, I bring a potato chip, my friends, no one's ever said anything about that. That's crazy, man. Well, that blew my mind. You're like, whatever. I've been yeah. For a long time. But the next one I really like, I don't know if I ever tried this because I don't okay. know if it actually works on bigger things, but okay. strawberries. I, I do hate it when I have to like kind of eat around the stem. Right. But you take a straw and you stab it yeah. and the stem comes right out. But here's my question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, what if the strawberry was massive? You know, some of those massive mm -hmm. strawberries. Hey, you just, you just. And the stem was massive. Get a bubble tea straw. True. Yeah. But here's my other question. How do you get the the, the innards out. out of the out of the straw? You blow it? No. Think about this, man. You don't blow it because every strawberry you stab, the the in the innards goes. It will actually meet the other one. You just keep stabbing it, and it'll, eventually it'll just take up the whole straw. And you but I want to eat the innards. That's good strawberry. Oh, I mean, that's it's the a middle bit. of the straw. It's no, a no, little no, no, bit. No. That's the middle of the strawberry. I want yeah, that strawberry. Yeah, you are getting Especially rid of it. Especially if you're using a bubble tea straw, yeah. you're leaving a lot of good innards. Well, you, that's good eating. You, you can't. I mean, you really can't. There's nothing way around it. You either. No, way. I'll suck it out. I'll suck oh it out. Oh my gosh. I'll suck it out. Oh I don't care. Gosh. I'll be like, stab it. Take the stem out. And I'll be like, Ooh, dude. Good strawberry innards. Oh, oh, this one. All right, we've all we've all cracked. Um, we've all tried to crack an egg, and yeah. then a piece of the eggshell falls in there. Yeah, How, and you know, like you're just like tra poking around there for an hour. Supposedly, if you wet your fingers first. Are you are you here to talk about food hacks? We all know that you, you know that one. Everybody knows that one. No, no. Everybody Let me know if you guys knew that one. The we can take a finger poke. trick we could, we, we, on the eggshell. I didn't know that. Oh my god. We do it. It works, let's, right? Let's call this video. <laughs> food hacks that only Dan did not know. So there you go, guys. Hopefully those are helpful. Next time you want to eat any of those foods that we talked about. So there's a clever way to some either prepare or cook or mix or different ways to prepare them. Right. And then apparently I, I just didn't know things that everyone knew. Like no, maybe, maybe, I don't taco, know. Maybe you did, but pocket. let us know. I don't know. Maybe you did. Maybe I, I just know more about cooking because I do have a food show. So right. I don't know. But like you learned those when you were much younger. Yeah, I yeah. did. So maybe the Midwest taught you those no. things. How, how come people stole my ideas? Which one? Like the egg thing. No, Which, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, it's good. But anyway, let us know if you have any other food hacks or point out any other foods that we may be eating incorrectly. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya. Bye.